One day within your courts is better than a thousand
loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is arranged with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom helped, has built her house, and she has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine, yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens, she calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, Come, eat my food, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake, foolish, forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. making the most of the opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord.
Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You wouldn't mind if I was missing a page in my homily, would you? <laughs> well, what we just heard from John's Gospel, I mean, if you really, really heard it, it really should give you goosebumps, or at least set off a spark in your hearts. Uh, some of you may remember, it's 20 years now, I think, the movie, E.T. I saw it four times when it came out. I liked it so much I brought this niece and nephew and my sister and then somebody else. There were a couple of scenes in the movie that dealt with food. In the beginning, the older brother is gathered with his friends around a table playing games and eating the best food in the world, pizza. And then we see the younger brother trying to make friends with E.T. by leaving him a trail of candy, luring him out of his hiding place and into the house. And later on, we find a very hungry E.T. raiding the refrigerator and making a grand old mess. Through the warmth and humor of those scenes, we get many messages, themes of camaraderie, friendship, acceptance, but perhaps the most basic message we get is that we need food. Without food, we die. And what Jesus teaches us is that what is true of bodily food, or bodily life, is also true of spiritual food and spiritual life. Jesus says, let me solemnly assure you, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. As a matter of fact, the original verb could be translated as chewing, which shows that communion is a real meal. Jesus was on to say that his flesh is real food and we must feed on it. And his blood is real drink. And this nourishment, nourishment is required. We are to be raised up on the last day to those glories of heaven. Now, according to all the church fathers, all the theologians, and all the popes, and the church councils, and religious writers, up through the time of the Protestant revolt, they all knew and taught that our Lord literally meant what he said. The disciples who grumbled about Jesus' words understood perfectly well 
that he meant exactly what he said. But they can't believe that what he says could be true. If they had understood him in a purely metaphorical, figurative, or symbolic way, there would be no reason for them to be surprised and nothing to cause you know, an argument. This really is the apex of our Catholic faith in the Eucharist. Through the awesome power of God, the elements of bread and wine are totally and forever changed as the ordained priest pronounces the words of consecration. These elements really and truly change in substance, become the body and blood of Jesus. And they're given to us to be our very food that Jesus speaks of today. Now we know that our God, who can create something out of nothing, can surely change one existing thing into another, changing bread and wine into his body and blood. So perhaps the deeper miracle is that his flesh continues to look, taste, and smell like ordinary bread. Now could you imagine if we had to eat something that tasted like real human flesh, or drink human blood at 98.6 degrees? You know, our food is so good to us, and God is so good to us, and loves us so much, that he makes himself palpable to us. Throughout Mass, you know, we are constantly extolling our Lord's love for us. Some of the saints, though, if you've read up on some of the saints, the miracles of the saints, with the miracles of the Eucharist, you'll see that some of them actually, their photographs of a particular saint when she was given the Eucharist actually changed into flesh in her mouth. But fortunately, that's not going to happen to us, God willing. But remember his passion, how he suffered and died for us, how he shed every single ounce of his blood. And it's during the Lamb of God, where we also remember his triumphant resurrection, as everybody reverently kneels in adoration, the priest breaks off a piece of the sacred host and puts it in the chalice to unite the body and blood of Christ. And then the priest silently says, May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. And then the priest says another humbling prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through his death, through your death, gave life to the world. Free me by this most holy bloody and blood from all my sins, from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your teachings and commandments, and never let me be parted from you, just before he receives the Eucharist. And with deep love and tones, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And we humbly reply, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And then we receive the elixir of resurrection and everlasting life. God unites himself with man and man with God. We receive the bread come down from heaven. The most important effect of the Blessed Eucharist is intimate union with Christ. The very word communion suggests sharing in the life of our Lord and becoming one with him. If our union with Jesus is promoted and enhanced by all the sacraments through the grace which they give us. This happens more intensely in the Eucharist, for in it we receive not only grace, but the very author of grace. That's why we should reverently, piously, and frequently receive Holy Communion. 
Now, if we're not in the state of grace, if we have the stain of mortal sin on our soul, as I know I did for many years, then we can still make a spiritual communion. We do this by remaining in our pews and praising God, praying and expressing a desire to be united with Him forever, <clears throat> looking forward to that time we go to confession, and then we can receive the elixir of life. Now, our Lord longs to be united with us. I mean, there's the proof right there, what He would go through for us. He came down from heaven, suffered and died to save us. He knows how long and difficult and treacherous the road of life is. He has compassion for us. The greatest gift He gives us is divine food to strengthen and nourish us and to give us eternal life. Here's a conversation with St. Jose Maria Escriva. Receiving communion every day for so many years, anybody else would be a saint by now. You told me, and I, I'm always the same. Son, the saint replied, keep up your daily communion and think, what would I be if I hadn't received? O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment on. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten. Filled with confidence and trust, we turn to the Father with our petitions. For the Church, may her people be filled with the Holy Spirit, eager to give thanks to the Father for all things, in the name of Jesus. And for our parishes, may we grow in wisdom and grace as we receive our Lord at the Eucharistic table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nation and the world, may they become wise in doing what is good, and establish laws that uphold the dignity of the human person and the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially in the Archdiocese of Boston, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who risk their lives to keep our communities and nations safe, may the Lord bless them and their families for their sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are lonely, abandoned, orphaned, or suffer any type of neglect, may the Lord raise up men and women to draw close to them in their need 
and bring them the consolation of Christ. In particular, we pray for those in our prayer corner, for contentions, hospice care, and assisted living, and all others in need of constant care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have died, for Joan Murphy, whose funeral we recently offered, and especially for the deceased members of the Bowdoin and Mahilly families for whom this Mass is offered. May they enter the eternal life and may their loved ones be consoled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Good and gracious God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and answering them according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim you.
but through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly and fully, by the same Spirit, gracious and make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took prayer, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Christ our Lord, through whom you were 
show on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. Thank you. 